We've got some injury news to get to from the second joint practice between Cleveland and Philly. But really quickly, we are doing a month-long sub battle with our AFC North foes here at Chat Sports. We've got some decent separation between Steelers talk and Bengals breakdown, but I want to put them in the dirt. So subscribe right now if you love the Browns or you hate the Steelers. The Browns and Eagles hosted two joint practices leading into their second preseason game. And I think these joint practices are honestly more telling than the preseason games. I mean, Deshaun Watson, for example, was an active member in both joint practices, and he's not even playing in the preseason game. So before we all get up in arms over who wins the preseason game between Cleveland and Philly, which only DTR, who's starting, by the way, not even Dobbs is playing, so DTR to the moon, and Kellen Mond are playing in, I think joint practices can give you a much better idea as to where teams are going into the regular season. So some quick notes I've got with uh, to share with all of you guys from the joint practices, starting with a bit of an injury roundup, because the first day of the joint practices was a bit of a heart attack on a plate where the Browns had a couple key guys go down. But we got some good news to share with everyone. Miles Garrett has a foot injury. He's good to go. He's fine. Uh, he did individual drills today. Not so much, uh, you know, 11 on 11s, but Miles Garrett, he's fine. He's good to go. Elijah Moore is also good, as I put it. Coming back from the rib injury he sustained in the first week of the preseason, Moore is shaping up to be ready to go if he were needed to play in the preseason week two, but likely not going to happen as Kevin Stefanski is going to sit a lot of the starters. Denzel Ward suffered from kind of just the... Uh, elements of the heat being out in the sun so he's fine he's good to go after the first day of the joint practices and then finally Jack Conklin he is dealing with a concussion he's in the concussion protocol so 26 days away from week one against the Bengals you can shut down Conklin right that just gives us more Dewan Jones highlights to watch which who's against that so Conklin shut him down until the regular season don't need to play with the concussion but everyone else, if there was a game this Sunday, they would be ready to go and could be 100% or close to it uh, to play. So moving on to our second note from joint practices, and that is both teams looked really good. If you're looking for a clear-cut winner or loser, I would say the Browns won the first joint practice and the Eagles won the second. So both teams look like they could be rematching in February in Las Vegas. And that's kind of great to hear if you're the Browns. Not kind of. It is great to hear because you are going up against the reigning NFC champs. So for the Browns to go toe-for-toe -toe with the Eagles, the best team in the NFC, that says a lot about where Cleveland is right now compared to where they were last year. Now, you don't take my word for it. I mean, even Eagles reporters could respect what the Browns were doing on offense and defense. Our guy Elliot Shore Parks tweeted out, Deshaun Watson with another beautiful touchdown throw. Put it where only his receiver could get it. Strong start for the Browns offense. Uh, Cedric Tillman on the receiving end of this beautiful touchdown pass. Unfortunately, the Eagles do not allow videos from joint practice. So couldn't get a great glimpse of it. But Cedric Tillman has been a walking highlight, as I like to say, throughout training camp and the preseason thus far. Another Eagles beat reporter who tweeted out some good things about the Browns said, uh, you can tell the Eagles have picked up their energy today after getting outjuiced by the Browns on Monday. So this is what I was talking about where I said the Eagles won the second practice. By all accounts, the Eagles, I wouldn't say dominated, but kind of dominated. Like their offense and defensive line were much better in the second joint practice compared to the first. Deshaun Watson was a little bit more rocky in day two, which no pun intended, leads us to our next takeaway. And that is, Deshaun Watson was mostly sharp, but he played up against a very good Eagles secondary. Like, that Eagles secondary got Philly all the way to the Super Bowl with a lot of other great pieces, awesome offensive line. Jalen Hurts was fantastic, but the secondary is top five in the NFL, so I'm not overly concerned that Deshaun Watson tossed a couple of picks, uh, had a great play, like I said, to Cedric Tillman. One Eagles DB picked him off two to three times. It's not really clear whether or not it's an interception because sometimes the player gets their foot out of bounds and there's no referee to make a clear-cut ruling. You just kind of go off the eye test. But by all accounts, Deshaun Watson made a lot of great plays. He threw a red zone interception to wrap up the 
uh, 11 on 11 drills. So some good, some bad. But I believe that joint practices are a much better measuring tool than preseason games. And Deshaun Watson and the offense, they've put up some great plays and some great highlights over a very good Eagles defense. And sure, Philly got their fair share amount of wins in and more or less came away as the winner of day two. But the Browns offense, they definitely sent a message to the Philly Eagles. And I think Eagles players came out of these joint practices thinking, Browns? Yeah, they're not your usual Cleveland Browns. They are a team that we do not want to face in Las Vegas. Now, before we get on to the rest of my notes from training camp, which table are you sitting at? You know that uh, often like template, if you will, of lunch, ca uh, lunch cafeteria, lunch tables. Which one are you sitting at? Are you at table number one, which is Watson will be a pro bowler in 2023. Table number two, which is Watson will just be better than he was last year. Number three is Watson will not improve. Or number four is Watson will be worse. Let me know which table you are sitting at. I know 95% of our viewers want to go with somewhere between table one and two. I'm not going to let you guys get off that easy. You got to pick one, table one or table two. Put a gun to my head. I'm going to go with table number one. So Cade York had a big bounce back day or two following another ugh, preseason game where Cade York was perfect so far throughout uh, perfect since preseason week two throughout the two joint practices. He went six for six today, had a lot of makes and a lot of makes by a lot of distance, meaning that Cade York vintage leg is very much there. It's just the accuracy and the mental block he has to get over. But leg strength is not an issue for Cade York. So far throughout the preseason, he is 0 for 2 in field goals, 4 for 4 in extra points with misses both coming under 50 yards. I really hope Kevin Stefanski just kind of tosses out the offensive game plan. And if the Browns get to the Eagles like 30 to 35 yard line on Thursday night, just throw it out of bounds and let's get Cade York out there for a 45 to 55 yard field goal. And let's really put him under a stress test because this is the last question mark we really have going into the regular season. Do the Browns have a legit kicker? They've got a legit offense. They've got a legit defense. Kicker and special teams is the only question mark I have remaining. So yeah, we could see Dorian Thompson Robinson or Kellen Mond complete a pass for eight yards to move the sticks. But I'd rather see Kellen Mond, excuse me, Cade York go out there for a 48-yard field goal and discover, does he have it or not? Or is he all in his head? And if so, let's get Robbie Gold on the next flight to Cleveland. And before we get on to the rest of my takeaways, our sportsbook partner, BetUS, has the best deal in the land for the dog pound. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Enter promo code BROWNS125. If you're wondering what you can bet on, how about some good AFC North odds? The Browns are plus 375. That is just way too good a value to pass on. Plus, if history tells us anything, the Bengals are not three-peating. No team has ever three-peated in the AFC North. Now, the Ravens are going to be tough. I think the Steelers are going to be cheeks, but the Browns at plus 375, I cannot pass on that. So ride with me, taking Cleveland to win the division at chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Browns125. Fifth and final thing I want to share coming out of these practices, Dewan Jones' stock is just skyrocketing. Remember earlier how I said Jack Conklin's got a concussion, he's going to miss some time? Well, we just get more Dewan Jones highlights, and I'm tweeting them out over on my Twitter account, at Matthew Petey. So hit me up over there. I'm always sharing videos from preseason and joint practices or training camp in general. But Dewan Jones has been an absolute menace. And the best thing about joint practices is we get fights, baby. Because as fans, at the end of the day, we all love fights. Whether it's in hockey, whether it's in basketball. Quick sidebar, I always hate when the broadcasters go, Oh, no, we got some fighting going on. This isn't what the game is about. Shut up and put the fight on because that's what fans want to see. But Chops tweeted out, we have a fight. Dimitri Felton got hit late. Dewan Jones shoved someone. You had some peacemakers quickly break it up. But as a rookie offensive tackle, going in there and Michael Orr style, just shoving some bodies around because your RB3 got hit late, that is football porn. That is exactly what you want to see out of your boys up front. Going out there and protecting their own, that is what they are paid to do. They are part-time fourth-line hockey enforcers. 
You want your offensive tackles supporting your guys if there is a late or chippy hit or something like that. If anyone knocks down Deshaun Watson after the play, I want all five offensive linemen over there like bouncers tossing that guy off the field. So Jones already becoming a fan favorite, if you will. He's only allowed one pressure through 128 preseason snaps, and here he is sticking up for his guy. Dewan Jones, I know it's just been two preseason games, but he has quickly stolen all of the dog pounds hearts, and I don't quite know where he's going to eventually slot in on this offensive line because he's right tackle, and Kevin Stefanski said today he's a right tackle, but Jack Conklin just signed a four-year contract extension. So I'm not sure if maybe Jed Wills, if that doesn't work out, they move Conklin over to left tackle and let Jones take over at right tackle, or you try and force Dewan Jones to become a left tackle, and Bill Callahan has, just has a year to mold him to be a swing tackle for either side. But I can tell you this much. When Dewan Jones inevitably finds the field, he's not going to come off of it. He has been more than just a mountain of a human being at six foot eight. 374. He has been quick on his feet. He has been aggressive with his hands. Juwan Jones is a very good pick by Andrew Barry, and it is already paying off. Now, speaking of draft picks, which one was your favorite from the 2023 NFL draft? Now that we have almost a month of training camp in the books, you know, 15 practices, two preseason games, who's really stood out to you? Juwan Jones might not have been my pick back in April, but he's definitely towards the top right now. I was a big fan of the DTR pick. I was a bigger fan of the Cedric Tillman pick. And both of those guys are shining bright so far. So I'm still going to go with Cedric Tillman. I think he's going to be a playmaker for this team. But give me your favorite pick thus far down in the comment section. To wrap up the show, let's pick a card. We've got producer Jake Chipper behind the camera today. Chipper, a Philly native. The Eagles are going to be good this year. But the Browns so. going toe-for-toe -toe with them. That definitely says something because the Eagles are, you know, the measuring stick, if you will, for success only after the Chiefs. Yeah, it's impressive. It's impressive. Both teams are good. Um, which card do you want to go? I'm going to go eight of clubs. Eight of clubs? Okay. Eight of clubs. Producers are up 3-1. So I've got some ground to make up, and I am running out of daylight. Eight of clubs, put me down for the ace of diamonds. Mm. Nah, bad pick. I hate myself. I hate myself. Eight of hearts. Oh. Eight of hearts. <laughs> that is a bad beat. Someone call SVP. Okay. That will do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe. Like the video if you enjoyed our content. We'll see everyone later.